Okay. Well, thank you, Leila. Uh, thank you, colleagues in the Middle East Librarians Association. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to, to talk to librarians across the sea on, on the Middle East and the libraries in the Middle East uh, and what we are going through uh, at the moment. Uh, neutrality is a, an important issue uh, in all libraries and especially in a critical zone area. I think that's a, a very difficult aspect to touch on. But before I go into that uh, part of the presentation, I'd like to introduce you to the um, one moment, to the Lebanese Library Association. Uh, it was founded in 1960. We were the first Arab Library Association to be established and founded and recognized by the Lebanese government. Uh, our mission is to provide leadership for the development, promotion, and improvement of the library and information sector, and a vision. We hope to be the home of the library and information professionals, not just in Lebanon, but in the region. Uh, that's our greatest inspiration. Uh, we organize, as all associations do, conferences, seminars, book fairs. And the last conference, we were able to organize a conference in 2021 under the title of Libraries as a Power of Change. Um, we have helped expand our exchange and experience with colleagues across the region. Uh, we've been able to share experiences with each other, uh, learn from each other, and that's the very positive part of being a part of an association. Uh, we are members in the International Federation of the Library Association and the MENA Group and the Managing Library Association section of MENA, of IFLA, sorry, which uh, really does assist in allowing the association to grow more and more. Uh, we also participated in the International Advocacy Program, uh, which was to raise awareness and train librarians to become trainers on the UN 2030 Agenda, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, I am I'm one of the official trainers of IFLA on the SDGs. Um, we also uh, represented Lebanon in the IAP Golden Convening, Global Convening in New York. Um, and then we participate, we were the first Arab uh, association to be chosen in the MENA region to participate in a program building strong library associations which really changed the, the image and vision and strategic planning of our association. Uh, we we're also um, assigned by IFLA to be uh, the representatives of uh, the library sector in the Lebanese C National Committee for Blue Shield. And we're in part of the Alliance of Levant Library Associations, which in includes Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, uh, Palestine, and Iraq, I believe, uh, are also on board. Um, as an association, we've been able to establish special interest groups, whether it's a school library, academic libraries, medical libraries, and hopefully we'll be able to add on with us very soon, archive centers. Uh, we've also established several task forces along the years. Currently, we have two task forces that are still running. Uh, one is the copyright task force, which is trying to assist and work on amending the Lebanese copyright laws uh, to become more, let's say, uh, updated or what we as librarians want to see in exceptions and exemptions there. And we have a disease, disaster relief task force, which is established right after the August 4 blast in Beirut. Uh, we're still working on that. The relief is not what happened at the very beginning, but we're still trying to assist libraries and librarians, uh, not just with relief of the blast, but also COVID, you know, how to deal with the after effects of COVID in the library world as well, whether in their skills or their setup and their organization. Um, we have several dissemination platforms. Uh, as you can see, the Library Association website, you can just log on anytime you want and find out more about us. We have our Facebook uh, platform, our Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube, where we post uh, the videos of all the sessions that we, we provide across, uh, across the, the, the months that came during the COVID and after COVID, and we're, we're still providing other sessions. Uh, we recently launched a seminar calling Spotlight on Libraries. Uh, we began with public libraries. Our next session is going to be about specialized libraries. And then we're moving on to definitely having a special session for just for the National Library, the Lebanese National Library. And we, we might even include one session on our preservation and conservation uh, libraries uh, in Lebanon that are working really hard to preserve our heritage and archives, of course. Um, oh, sorry. I went back. Okay, uh, just a bit about me. I felt that maybe I should include this because we're talking about neutrality, inclusivity, being open, being diverse. I am from the town of Pshari in Lebanon, which is the town of Jibran, Khalil Jibran, and the Cedars of Lebanon. 
and I'm very proud to be part of that town. Uh, I was raised in a family where a person is valued for their good deeds, their hard work, and their de being dedicated friends. And that's the main where we're brought up because um, there's diversity in my, in, in my upbringing. I'm Lebanese in nationality. I was born in Nigeria, so I spent my younger years in Nigeria. I was then educated in UK in my younger years and as my master's. And I'm a member of an international group of librarians. And that's a very nice uh, aspect that really uh, gave me the, this, this diverse inclusion or a diverse field or image of what this profession includes. Um, and since we're talking about neutrality, it demands that librarians have this diversity with them, have this openness uh, to go on in their work and accept what comes in their work later. I will now move on to the topic of our session, which is the neutrality and open space or uh, <laughs> safe space. Uh, as the Oxford Dictionary says, neutrality is defined as the state or condition of not being on any side, absence of decided views, feeling, or expression. Uh, I think librarians would have a very difficult time uh, accepting or agreeing or saying, how can we do this? How is it acceptable to accept, uh, possible to say, I am not on any side? Well, first of all, um, how do we define neutrality? You can, there's a lot of literature out there. You can read on and on and on, but none of them has actually pinpointed what neutrality is in the library world. And I think that's still under study. So when I was invited by Layla, that maybe I could speak about this topic. I thought, okay, I might not be able to do a full-fledged study uh, uh, on, on the subject, but I can just discuss this with a, a small group of librarians from diverse libraries, different areas, geographic areas in Lebanon, and see what their intake is on. Of course, you have varied responses across the group, but most of them agreed to one aspect. It's being objective in providing the needed information to assist our users. That was mainly the general way that librarians see neutrality. Now, what do we mean by objective? That's another very uh, subjective manner. And they all felt that there was this huge conflict uh, between personal beliefs and professional values. And that's the biggest struggle they believe librarians would have in dealing with the topic of neutrality. And it all comes down to one very clear aspect that they said, it all comes down a lot of time, personal beliefs and personal character plays a major role in how you deal with it. If they're faced with big issues in the libraries, if you have uh, a fresh librarian starting the work, they might be flustered and, and not know how to answer. Uh, if it's more senior librarians, they might be able to answer in a more diplomatic and, and reserved way. But that was an issue that was also discussed in the group. And this led me to think of maybe this is something that as the Lebanese Library Association, what we can do is really carry out a study on this subject and topic in, in, the Arab, in, the Leban, in Lebanon and see what is it that we really uh, think of as neutrality and how would we deal with it as librarians in our profession and our work. Uh, so the questions we think about mostly is when do librarians consider neutrality? Is it in collection building? Is it when we offer our services or conduct outreach? Is it in planning and conducting programs? So these are different aspects of neutrality that we have to think about. And I can, the different parts of it or the challenges that we usually face, especially in Lebanon, because I think, uh, I hope you're all aware that, well, you're all aware that Lebanon is a very uh, uh, diverse uh, cultural, diverse community in religion, political and cultural. And the two biggest aspects that play a role in, in Lebanese society is the religious and the political part, uh, mostly. We have 18 recognized religious sects, as if you can imagine what that means. So we have a lot of political and religious differences. And sometimes it's very difficult uh, for Lebanese to, to differentiate between the political and the religious aspect of, of issues in, in their daily life. And there are some sensitive and delicate topics that sometimes uh, we try uh, to avoid or not to talk about in because it's a conflict zone. Uh, there are taboo topics in, in Lebanon that are still there. Although the younger generations are being very outspoken and, and you know, being more um, aggressive, I can say, they've been very aggressive about getting their voices heard. Uh, and we always have the dichotomy in Lebanon. Are we East or are we West? <laughs> uh, and this sometimes comes from the religious aspect. Uh, for example, um, the Maronite church in Lebanon, 
uh, is only in Lebanon. You will not find you will only find Maronites who, have, who are Lebanese. But at the same time, the Maronite Church affiliates to the Catholic Church, which is in the West. Uh, so this is one thing. You still have Lebanese people who go, "Am I Phoenician or are we Arabs?" We still have this dichotomy, and I find it very strange. Some we can be Phoenicians and we can be Arabs at the same time. But that's my personal opinion. So if I were to say that in front of someone as a librarian, oh no, no, we can be both. What do you mean we can be both? So. This is, for example, a place where we really have to watch out what we say and who we say, although this is not neutral, this is, we're going against what we believe as librarians uh, and uh, other aspects of our profession. Uh, when it comes to collection development, uh, it's very difficult for us to always say, yes, we're going to have balanced and, and unbiased choices. Uh, sometimes this is forced onto us because of the policies and strategies adopted by our institutions. Uh, and sometimes maybe further on by our communities, what is it they accept? What is it they don't accept? Uh, we face a major issue of censorship directly from the general security customs. They exercise strict censorship on the very uh, minute aspect, which sometimes I find really, um, as, as, as a librarian on, on, on a personal basis, it's, it goes way above what we, we, we believe, although everyone keeps saying Lebanon is a very open country, Lebanon is very diverse. So there is this you know, uh, dichotomy that's always present there. And of course, a challenge for this collection development being balanced and unbiased, basically balanced, is prioritizing based on funding. When it comes down to funding, librarians say, okay, what is my priority? Do I have to get uh, a book that talks about uh, uh, taboo topics and creates a big problem with, with what's going on in my, my library? Or do I just say very basically, okay, put the funding in the, the books that my users want and that's it, just stop there. Just uh, answering the needs of my users. Or am I as a librarian supposed to go beyond that and get books and material that challenge my users to think beyond what they know and what they believe in? And of course, we have a major issue in Lebanon with our contemporary archives. We went through a, a war from 1975 till 1990 and, and the problems are still going on. And so the, our contemporary archives are rich with, 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 with material that would really sometimes, uh, it's very sensitive and very touching. So when, if you make them available to your community, they might create a big uh, problem for the librarians. How do you have these archives? Why are you posting them now? Don't you know that this sect is against this sect or this political idea is not accepted at the moment? Or what do you mean assassinations? It's, it's a huge problem that we sometimes don't know how to deal with. And sometimes we have to be, well, self-censored because we have to watch out who is it we're opening our archives to? Who is it are we making our archives available to? Uh, so this is another thing. So it's a bit difficult to, to uh, be able to uh, establish this neutrality in our libraries uh, uh, from this aspect. Uh, another part is the services and outreach. Uh, we'd love to schedule activities that are debatable and sensitive topics. You know, this is what, what a library is supposed to do. It's not just providing the information. It's also raising awareness. It's opening the channels. It's making you a better citizen, but we go on from there. We have to respond to Lebanese users, but at the same time, we have to respond to the needs of refugees. As I believe you know, we have a huge number of refugees. It's getting to the point where the number of refugees is higher than the number of actual Lebanese citizens in the country. Uh, and the most important ch big challenge is training our staff to respond to these specific needs and situations. Are our staff up to it? Will they be able to respond? Will they be able to make the good judgments? And at the same time, we want to defend intellectual freedom. You know, it's, it's a big issue. How am I supposed to do that in such an environment uh, where we, we, we demand that we have the freedom to express ourselves and the demand to read what we want to read, but at the same time, we have to be sensitive to our, our communities and, and our environment. Uh, so, Solutions? Well, it's not a definite solutions. It's just potential ideas that we, we brains, uh, brainstorm together. Um, we're talking about neutrality. What about the issue of inclusivity? Maybe that would bring the neutrality easier when we start being libraries that are more inclusive. Uh, and this is where we touch the aspect of um, safe space. Uh, I place the first point depending on the Lebanese Library Association. That means that the association has to play a big role 
in this neutrality inclusivity aspect, uh, first starting with the librarians, with the training of the librarians, and then building programs and activities or assisting these libraries to reach out to the communities and see what can what can happen. Uh, as I told you, we have uh, a task force working on copyrights. Maybe we should also be working on uh, intellectual freedom, access to information, av uh, information available to all. Uh, that's one important aspect. Um, We've already started building on collections as network, networking libraries. Uh, as you know, the biggest libraries in Lebanon are the academic libraries. So they, they started to network together and we're starting to depend on the collections that are available with each other. We have a consortium of libraries for electronic resources, another one for document delivery. Uh, so these are our, our two aspects we're trying to work on to create this a neutrality. For example, our my collection or the collection, not my, the collection at the Holy Spirit University of Castique is very rich with material on Christianity, philosophy, Maronite church, history, uh, archives, manuscripts. Uh, this is something very rich, we're rich about. If you go to the American University of Beirut, they have a huge archive on the Palestinian diaspora or the Palestinian as, uh, refugees in Lebanon. So we're trying to, to see how we can share this material together to sort of in a way create this neutrality so we can open the channels among the Lebanese and have these uh, exhibitions that we're, that we're offering. Um, building an image of variety and openness in our activities. Uh, this is something that, that is actually happening within the libraries. Uh, I just spoke to, uh, well, not just spoke, but uh, during the presentation of the public libraries, uh, the director of the library there said that they are they're there, they have good connections with the schools, but they are not an extension of the school. Uh, what they actually do is they, they um, know the curriculum that is being built in the school, but then they build activities on, on ideas and topics and discussions that are held in the school to develop further on them, where the student becomes more self-independent and works on his personal development or her personal development or her personal hobbies and, and what they like to work on, but built, uh, depending on what their subjects they're taking in school. That is one, one form of it. Uh, we organize open forums of debate, but we still try to keep them under that academic umbrella uh, so that they do not become very politicized. I know politics is an important part of every individual's life or every citizen's life, but we, we try to, to leave that, give it more an academic touch than just a pure political uh, debate touch. Um, we organize a lot of events that unify and bring people to the library. Uh, for example, there is a library in a public library as well in the north of Lebanon that reached out to farmers uh, in, in the Kura area uh, where there are lots of, uh, it's a major area to produce olives and they have, so they have olive trees. So one activity the public library actually did is it reached out to um, researchers and another company that was dealing with the, how to develop your, your production in olives and olive oil. And they held these seminars and these sessions with the farmers on how to improve their production and, and their, the, their, their visibility and their management of, of their produce. Uh, and then the, the farmers started seeing that the library was a, a, a form, a, a place where they can go to and they can ask the librarians. Now the librarians might not be able to answer them directly on what they should do, but the librarians were able to guide them on whom to answer or put them in contact with someone who could assist them in answering their questions. So this became part of the way of getting them uh, to feel that the library is a place that they can refer to and the librarians there are people that are welcoming and and, uh, and just they're willing to be in a system. Um, libraries are changing their the manners in which they they organize the library itself. So they are allowing the youth to experience uh, a less formal environment than the school, uh, making the library a more open area, a more accessible area. Uh, I know, for example, a lot of universities in Lebanon have uh, open weeks, not open day, uh, for school uh, for schools to just come in, not just to be introduced to the university, but to come into the library, to participate in the activities in the library, to go through research activities and other activities that just you know, grasp them and make them feel comfortable, uh, that the library is not what they imagined it to be, and, and so they can just feel 
you know, that, yeah, a library is a nice place to go to. It's not what we usually have. Usually in the school, it was, okay, you're under detention, go to the library, sit there and read a book. And that was it. So now the image is changing definitely a bit more and more. Um, we're developing programs for different groups and ages. I just mentioned uh, the, the farmers, uh, refugees, definitely. Uh, we had support uh, from the uh, UNESCO, uh, Beirut, UNESCO, and the Lebanese Commission for the UNESCO on activities for refugees and how to assist them. You know, when they first came, the assistance was more like, uh, what do I do? Where do I look for, where can I look for a job? How can I get in touch with you, NDP, for my food vouchers? So these were uh, a bit uh, some uh, aspects that we, we dealt with. Uh, people with disabilities, uh, the libraries based on, I'm not gonna make it a, a glorified picture that we're able to cater to all. No, especially now in the past years where we've had major financial problems. So our budgeting has been very restricted, but we were moving in the right direction. Of, of assisting uh, people with disabilities to, to the extent that we could and trying to learn from other library associations and referring back to IFLA in a lot of cases on what is it we can do with the limited sources we have. Uh, we're actually using the UN 2030 agenda SDGs um, to include them in our programs and our, and our activities so that if we need funding or support from our institutions or from donors, we say, listen, we're doing these activities not just because we want to do them, but we're trying to assist the, the, the government or the country to move forward in, these 2030, in this 2030 agenda. And it's sort of like, oh yeah, that's a good way of going into it. That's a way of getting support on what you need. And it's every time we approach the government on activities or, programs, we always drop the line of the 2030 agenda. Uh, we've started to partner with a lot of non-library institutions um, uh, and other NGOs in Lebanon. Non-library institutions also, they are mainly heritage institutions like museums and archives. So in, in Lebanon, for example, we have uh, La Nuit de la Musée, it's like when all the museums in Lebanon open their doors for free and everyone can come in. Same thing with the archives. There is an open day for archives. All the archives, well, most of the archives in Lebanon also have a whole week where they welcome uh, visitors and they have their archives on exhibition and they talk to them about archives and give sessions on that. So this is one way of creating uh, a more inclusive, I'm not gonna say neutral, but more inclusive library that is, that our users feel that it's more it's a, a safe place to come to and feel that you can you know reach out to us um we're presenting sessions we started to develop sessions in schools i hope this can go on it, we stopped it with the COVID, but i hope it can go on uh where we actually start targeting more the issue of dialogue and the art of listening this is what we need in lebanon with such a diverse community you have to get these young people to sit together to actually learn how to talk to each other and how to listen to each other and accept each other. This is the most important aspect that we, we have. I remember I was, with it, I, I was asked to go and speak in a school about what preservation and, and uh, digitization is or what is it that libraries do in, in preservation and digitalization. And you will not believe how interested they were. Oh, you can do this. Oh, we have this. Oh, we do this. And, and then the question was, why are we doing all of this? And the answer was, we're trying to preserve our heritage because the saying says, if you don't have a past, you don't have a future. And this allows you to understand each other. So come uh, see our, our archives, see our collections, try to understand where you came from, to understand where you're going. So this is something that started asking, getting to ask questions. And then the question, the next question I have, oh, do we get degrees? If we want to, can we study to become a conser a, a curators or working in conservation and digitization? They were really interested. So this is a good aspect with the, the young people. Uh, some libraries started introducing library makerspace. Of course, it needs more funding, as, as we know, but they started uh, little steps. And of course, we one of the major solutions we are targeting is now training librarians, especially the new professionals, on how to respond objectively and professionally to questions that they are received that are very uh, uh, delicate or sensitive and not to just, you know, uh, freeze out or, or, or not know what to do in, in such cases. So we hope to be able to, to move with this uh, further and further. Um, I, I think I, I can't <laughs> say more than that. I can just say that uh, neutrality is, they are troubled waters. We need more discussion on that. We need, we need more practice on what, what is it we as librarians believe is neutrality. It might not be the same 
for librarians in the States or in Europe as it would be for librarians in the MENA region. But at least, you know, each uh, region or each area gets to understand what they want to, uh, how they would like to describe neutrality or how they would like to be able to, to, to perform in this manner. And I'm sure that we can all learn from each other uh, in different cases. Uh, I'm sure Lebanon is not the only country that has, uh, I know we've learned a lot from Europe in the case of refugees and the way they open their libraries for refugees. So it's the same way um, people can learn from us uh, and we can learn from them. And this is what I believe that would be the most important aspect of, of getting to where we want to get to as librarians in, in this field and in this, in this subject or in this uh, topic as well. And thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, we're, I'm open now to, to your questions. <laughs> Yes, yes, thank you so much, Rhonda. This is really, really a great conversation. I should say we will have the conversation now. Um, can you remove I'm your... trying to stop sharing yeah. my yeah. screen. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Just... Uh, if anyone has a question, this is what we will start now. Please share your question on the chat, or if you prefer to open the mic, it's fine. Um, Rhonda is going to answer your questions um, or even comment or experience you want to talk about if you have been in Lebanon or deal with a book talking about neutrality or diversity in Lebanon, who are willing to also uh, have a conversation, not just question and answer. Okay, I have a question for you <laughs> until <laughs> our, our books can really warm up because you had talked about a lot of things, Rhonda, and thank you very much. And I'm sure a lot of us have a lot of questions to handle, um, to ask you. And um, I can ask my question and then you can answer also, um, Amanda. My question to you is, you talked about UNESCO are helping with the refugee. Can you talk yeah. about a little bit about what kind of help do you offer the library? This is one. And second, if you have any kind of collaboration between librarians and educators in school to deal with naturality, because library really deal with it, but school deal with it more. So there is yeah. type yeah. of training mm -hmm. or collaboration between library and uh, teachers. Yeah. Um, the, the first, the answer to your first question, the UNESCO part, the UNESCO part, because as you, as, as you know, the, the refugee camps, the Syrian refugee camps were set up by UNESCO in, in areas in the Beka and in different areas in Lebanon. So what, what, uh, what UNESCO allowed us to do is to be able to, to reach out, especially the, um, the libraries in, in Beirut, uh, the Sabil uh, library was able to reach out to the refugees who were living in the Beirut area, okay? And they offered sessions, they offered uh, um, storytelling hours for the children, uh, the refugee children who were still not going to school because, you know, at the beginning of the, 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 the conflict in, in Syria, um, we were not ready for it. It was after some time that the Lebanese government took the decision uh, to have afternoon schools in the public schools for the refugee uh, children. But before that, these children were at home all the time. Uh, so uh, some of the public libraries opened their doors and said, they can come over and you know just let study, read, storytelling, we can assist them. That was a way we were able, and it was UNESCO was able, was able to, to uh, assist in uh, putting us in touch with these um, uh, families and getting them getting them ready to go to these public libraries because they were a bit hesitant about oh should I go to Beirut you know there's a big issue in Lebanon about this so um, um, can I go yes you can you're welcome the public library as you know libraries and all libraries are not open to a specific group uh, especially public libraries so it became a way of saying you're welcome anytime you want to come uh, and that was a way that they reached out to the refugees um, can you repeat your second question? I'm sorry, I was focusing okay. on the first question. Uh, my second question, if there is any kind of collaboration with uh, teachers in- Oh yeah, okay. Or the, the, yeah, yeah. The, this was something that we, we, we had a very hard time as an association, because I think you all know in schools, you have a certain bureaucracy. Uh, in academic libraries, it's a bit different for librarians. We, sat, we have some control over what yeah. we do and how we present our strategic plans and our action plans. Uh, and we can move on as long as it's under the strategy of the university. With schools, it's a bit different. 
different. With schools, you have the librarian, and then you have the head of the department, and then you have the head of whatever, and then you have the principal, and then you have the board of, board of uh, I don't know, parents group. So it's like, it's very difficult for librarians to be able to touch on topics uh, that schools don't want to hear about. Okay, yeah. schools want to do the academic part and that's it. So this is one part we're trying to do now. We're trying, first of all, uh, we do not know, although there's a law in Lebanon that every school is supposed to have a library, but it's not being applied in Lebanon for different reasons. So what we are as an association is first doing is we're, we're, we're drawing this map of where are the school libraries? Which school has a library? And do they have librarians, qualified, uh, librarians with a degree in librarianship or what form of training they have or diploma or something. So this was a bit difficult to work on because uh, we could do it with the private schools, but it was a, it's a bit difficult with the public schools. Uh, the public schools, we have to go through the Ministry of Education, higher education, so that then we can talk to the schools. And so it's a longer process now, but that's an aspect that it would be very interesting if we can actually, as an association, uh, present this to the Ministry of Education about including this in a topic uh, of neutral. And since we do have this connection with UNESCO and the Lebanese com uh, Commission, UNESCO Commission, maybe we can you know, uh, advocate with them to, mm -hmm. to also discuss it with the government. It's a plan we have to think about, but thank you for raising it. Thank you. Um, okay. I think we have, have questions. <laughs> you have, yeah, you have two questions. One yeah. from Amanda and from- yeah. uh, Amanda, can you expand more on the partnerships with cultural heritage? Okay. Um, well, because first of all, uh, this came about because of Blue Shield, uh, because uh, Blue Shield was established because of four institutions. Uh, the International Federation of Library Institution, the ECOM, the ECOMOS, and the ECA, which cover the four heritage institutions. And because of that, because of Blue Shield, and because Blue Shield, um, the bylaws, the statutes say that you have to have a representative from each one of these uh, four institutions. So me being Lebanese Library Association and establishing Blue Shield, uh, I got to meet uh, the president of ECOM in Lebanon, the president of ECOMOS, and as I told you, there's no ECA, so we're trying to work with, uh, there's no, sorry, there's no ECA in Lebanon, the Council, International Council of Archives, but we hope to solve that soon. Uh, so I was able, I was able to meet with, with these uh, two presidents and we said, okay, why are we each in a different you know, uh, working each on their own. We're all in the same boat. We're all, we all deal with heritage. We all deal with information. We all deal with the same aspect of digitization, with inventory, with, you know, different aspects. So this is the way we started working with them. And the greatest part of the work, unfortunately, came after the, the, the blast, uh, when we actually went on the ground and we started assisting each other uh, in the libraries, in the archives, in the museums. Uh, so, and then recently we uh, also thanks to the British Council who has been funding, they have a program where they fund heritage uh, projects. Um, and they found out that maybe they're not doing, they're not putting the money in the right place, I think. So they decided mm -hmm. to have this round table where we come together as different groups from different heritage, whether it's tangible or intangible. And we sort of discuss what is it we feel we need to develop uh our, our our heritage collections and work on it and it's still ongoing till now we haven't come up with the final report so this is the bridge that was being built between the different heritage we found out that we can't stand alone as libraries we have to really reach out to the other and since it's all going towards the glam we're no longer libraries but we're glam so that's the the aspect we're moving on to i believe thank um, you you have a question from nof yeah how do you think youth interventions can be integrated into the library system especially in the case of refugee youth who become contributors to the topic. Oh, okay. Oof, God. <laughs> Get them into the library system. Well, I think I always believe that there are always role models out there. So um, we, when sometimes when you meet some youth, you feel that, oh my God, this, this young man or young lady uh, are very, well, they present themselves very well. They're very vocal. They, they have clear ideas. They, they know how to express what they, they, they want or what, they should do, and we shouldn't forget them, just silence them and put them on the side. So one way of getting them into the library system is maybe first uh, having them part of our uh, group discussions, uh, getting them into our group discussions, having them part of, uh, if for example, I decide uh, that we're gonna have an activity where we visit a school, okay, 
why don't you come with me and talk to your peers? I want you to discuss this with your peers since you have been talking about neutrality or uh, how you came to belong to this community or what, you mean, what it means to belong to a community or to be neutral uh, or to be a person who is open to ideas and accept other people's ideas. So maybe it's in a way getting them to also be part of this uh, awareness uh, activities and then you get into the system and uh, they start contributing to the topic whether it's verbal or you get them maybe not to write major academic papers but maybe a poster maybe uh, you know create activities that are more targeted to the youth to express themselves on these topics like, just like we did with all other topics whether it was euthanasia or you know uh, when it came along so we, we built topics around we build activities around the topic of uh, neutrality or, or, or safe libraries in a way. I, I, I haven't thought about it, but that would be a good thing to do, another exercise to do as well. Yes, you're giving me lots of exercise to work on at the moment. <laughs> okay, take notes so we can follow up. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you, Rhonda. Uh, Thank you. Iman also have a question. Iman is our colleagues from UCLA, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, have the library Lebanese Libraries Association considered opening dialogue with the faculty in library and information schools and programs on integrating this topic of neutrality, equality, and inclusion into their programs. That is very interesting uh, because uh, at the moment, I think it's, it's going to be a bit difficult to get into topic with them at the moment because of the situation. Uh, I think that, you know, the, the financial crisis we're going through at the moment has really hit higher education in such a way that we're losing major uh, faculty members uh, in the country. So, but one thing we can do is we can actually um, start this dialogue ourselves as an association with students in the master's program, maybe, you know, these are the students who are later going to be librarians and working with out there. And maybe a next step would be, yes, it would be, uh, we ha we will have to ask, just as they decided to include the technology part as part of the curriculum, I think this is something we should start really start thinking of neutrality, equality, inclusivity, ethics. These are things that we really have to hit on harder and harder in our in our curriculums for uh, LIS students. Yes, definitely. Okay, I think I agree with um, with Amanda about that. I wish if we have also a round table like this in the United States. Um, there's a question now from uh, mm -hmm. Daniel, yeah. Oh, okay. Do Lebanese libraries encounter major roadblocks in dealing with libraries and archives within Israel and Palestine? Uh, well, first of all, I think, you know, the Lebanese government stand is that we cannot deal in any way with uh, anything in the government of Israel or Israeli, but regarding uh, Palestinian, uh, in occupied territories, we can deal with them. We actually had a couple of them who attended our conference uh, physically in Beirut before we had the, the COVID and the online conference. Um, we, we, we deal with them through uh, our association. We deal with them through IFLA. Uh, I have colleagues in, in uh, uh, the University of Quds University. So Randa Kamal is a very close colleague that I, I'm always in contact with. Uh, when it comes to um, dealing with them, we, we started on a personal level, but I think it's, it's growing basically more and more. Uh, we do not have problems with our, our Palestinian colleagues, but definitely no connections at all with Israel. Thank you, Randa. Um, I think I really have a question also related to what's the model that you're looking for? Is there is a model like whenever we talk about uh, um, discrimination, we look at South Africa when what's your model? Do you visualize something? Not utopia, of course, but do you feel like my goal in this coming two years is this or that? Um, honestly, if we're talking basically about neutrality and, and that aspect of it or, or different issues, I think one, one of the major goals we have to go into, as I told you, is to decide what is it to us, what, what is neutrality to us. Once we know what it is, uh, once we have like a, a national study of what where librarians in Lebanon stand concerning this this, this subject, uh, and then we can we can actually start saying, okay, so in a year's time or six months time, just like we're planning all our other activities, we should have another task force working on this topic alone. How can we have neutral, safe libraries? What does it mean in Lebanon? 
to have neutral and safe libraries. I think this is the, the major aspect. I cannot say what model we were going to choose uh, because uh, we, we might uh, adopt something from uh, apart from American institutions, uh, from you know the uh, American Library Association, which we have good contacts with. We also have good contacts with the with the with the Australian Library Association and the New Zealand Library Association. Um, so you know, it's it's it. We can't just say this model is going to fit us in Lebanon. Yeah. We might have to look at different models and then tweak it here and there to to, to suit our community. But this has to be done with with the total uh, backing up and, and, uh, and, and commitment of the Lebanese librarians. Uh, the association will not do something where we believe that our librarians will, will, will not be able to enforce or, or, or grasp or take on. Because if we do that, we would be excluding some people out of the, the talk. So, and I think this is what neutrality is not, we're not about. This is not the yeah. goal of it. So we have to really, first of all, understand where our librarians stand on this topic to then know what it is we, we will do regarding this topic. Definitely. Thank you, Rhonda. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm also- No, it's yeah. okay. Um, Aisha has a question about censorship. Um, yes, do you, did you have to fight against efforts, attempts to ban certain books in your libraries? um yes we did have to we had some efforts but it was mainly uh books uh for example one uh, one of the, the two big cases i can remember was the salman rushdie uh ayat shaitaniya satanic, satanic verses that was oh my god no way can it come into lebanon uh, as librarians I didn't. I don't think we took a stand on that book because we knew that it was a very sensitive topic in our community, and not just in Lebanon. I think the whole Arab world was like, uh, not. The, so that was something that we, you know, we we. I can say we pick and choose our fights. You know, uh, it's also like it, it comes from a consensus of the librarians. Uh, we had. We were, uh, for example, Da Vinci's Code was was uh, was censored, and we're like, hold on. Uh, don't you see the first page? It says that this is fiction. And well, what do you mean? It's and I think that the fight for censorship is not more is not with the with the customs people more than the mentality of the people, not the government more than the mentality of the people. Because I remember I had we had a book on the shelf. Uh, one of the libraries had a book on the shelf, something about quotations from Facebook, uh, and one one of pages that was open was a comment that was made about religion, and the student came over to the director and said, "Why do you have?" This book on shelf, you know. It, well, what do you mean? Why do I have this book on the shelf? It's Facebook and comments from Facebook. And it's like, yeah, what's well, it? But, but hold on, aren't don't the the way they respond was, do you have an account on Facebook? He says yes, I do. So if you see this comment on Facebook, what will you say? He says okay, you know. It was like you are uh, arguing about a book on Facebook on the shelves, but you have an account on Facebook and you're seeing these comments there as well and other comments. So why are you making it an issue in the library? And then in the end, you are a university student. Aren't you here to broaden your mind? And so it was sort of like a discussion. And then the student was like, mm, okay, you know, but it's, it was, <laughs> it was funny. I found it very funny about, you know, a comment that, you know, it's, uh, um, it's, it's a thing that, uh, we do we do have problems with books being banned, uh, but thankfully the books that were banned are mostly uh, books related to, um, well, not I'm not happy about it, but it's it's more in fiction and although fiction widens the mind and gives you imagination and so on, but uh, we're trying to get over this in, in different aspects. We're trying to to talk more and more with the government, especially the Ministry of Culture. And what I understood is that one of the strategic plans of the Ministry of Culture is that this aspect of banning books or not banning books is not no longer going to be with the general security, the customs people who are just policemen and they don't know what they're doing. But it's also it's going to be with the Ministry of Culture, where you have people hopefully who understand culture and what the banning of books is. And you know, and this is where as a library association, we might have some influence or or a word to stay or, or some position on that. You have also some of the digitization. Do you do you have any kind of collaboration with international community? Like, for example, when the pandemic happened, a lot of people had no access to the archives in and Lebanon, is particularly. There is a problem with our you our researchers to go to Lebanon because yeah. they cannot get fund to go like Fulbright. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So how do you, like, for example, uh, American universities, you can provide the digitized in-house yes. copy mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. us. Yes. Actually, mm -hmm. I get a lot from them. Do you yes, do I know. I know that the American University of Beirut is very active in that. And they, they, they had a, a, an agreement with several American, for example, NYU. They have, I think, an agreement with NYU on digitizing different things. But yet, they do offer that as a service. And other universities as well. I know that the Holy Spirit University of Castique does that as well. If you if there is something that you want to see in our archives or you need a digital copy, they're willing to provide it. Uh, what I know is that a lot of the academic, well, the archives are mostly in academic institutions, the academic libraries, the big libraries. Um, they are now working on repositories. So the material is going to be made available online. Uh, but you, you have to give them a little bit of time because, you know, the funding and, and that main aspect that we're really suffering from now. And not only funding, it's also the, the human resources. Do we have the qualified human resources to carry out these technical duties? Because getting any IT, on, any IT person on board isn't the same as someone with a, a library uh, mindset and, and moving on in that. So, yeah, we are starting to work on solving this problem of access to our archives, definitely. Thank you, Rhonda. And thank you yes. for answering Aisha's question too. And Daniel is back for another question. Okay. I volunteer with Arabic speaking schools in, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how they can engage with Lebanese resources. Okay. Um, the Lebanese, if you're talking about school resources, it's a bit difficult. Uh, I know that maybe, uh, if, if you'd like, I can probably put you in contact with uh, my colleague in the Sabil uh, library, the public library, Sabil public library. Uh, they have a, a, an internal network in Lebanon uh, on sharing material. Uh, I'm not sure about if they're willing to extend this to, to, to Palestine as well and, and to deal with you and providing some material with you. Uh, I know in the past there was a program that was supposed to be launched regarding that, creating resources for uh, students uh, of the Arab world, Arab speaking students uh, and with Arabic material, uh, but I don't know where the project went. But of course, if, if you'd like, I can put you in touch with my, my colleague in Sabil. And I think we can I can look into it a bit more to see what other institutions would be willing to assist you. Uh, when you're saying Arab speaking schools, uh, do you mean do you want Arabic material in Arabic? Or could it be in, you know, Lebanon has English, French, Arabic as three main languages that we deal with. but are you mainly speaking about material in Arabic? That's what I would like then to know about Daniel. But I'm, I'm going to put my email in the chat. I think I put it in the presentation, but I'm going to add it here in the chat. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just moving around different screens. Okay, here we go. It's okay, I also asked Daniel to send me his email. Yeah, so okay, so email. I can, I can, Daniel, we can continue this conversation uh, later on, just so I don't, I give you any misinformation. That's the important part of it. Uh, if anyone have a question, you still have six minutes <clears throat> or five minutes, but <clears throat> if you don't, I can ask Randa to say something about their activities. <laughs> Our activities, oh, okay. <laughs> because we asked Randa actually if she can send her announcement to Mela because yeah, yeah. Uh, I think me and Amanda heard a lot and yeah. we said- I, uh, I Yeah, I told Laila that we would be willing if, if you know, we are shared your uh, credentials, especially your email, we can ask you, add you to our mailing list. And then whenever there's an activity that is being prepared by the Lebanese Library Association, you'll get a notification about it, uh, uh, announcement about the activity and we can move from there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, during Ramadan uh, period, we, we stop all our activities. So after Ramadan, uh, we're gonna start our activities and one of the activities we're going to start with is a, a spotlight on um, uh, specialized libraries uh, we basically have an information center that's going to be there we have uh, the director of uh, uh, one of the uh, 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 an education uh, platform uh, Shama she's going to talk about how they came up with this platform purely for education material in education uh, and different, uh, and I think we're going to have a colleague from the Palestinian uh, Studies Institute. Uh, she's going to be with us to talk about the center and the library in the center and uh, three other, I think there are going to be four librarians. They haven't confirmed yet. Uh, the session after that is, is probably going to be about uh, another, is focusing on other uh, libraries, which are school libraries in Lebanon. And then probably we're going to hit the, the national library, definitely for sure. 
uh, another uh, activity that we're going to cover is actually giving a platform for the libraries that work on digitization and, and conservation and preservation. Uh, another uh, aspect of talking about what is they do, uh, what uh, skills are required to join this profession, this special group of, of librarians or uh, technicians or whatever they want to call themselves, curators, um, and then move on from there. Um, we're also going to have another um, session about introducing uh, Blue Shield to the librarians so that they know that Blue Shield is there. If What is it we do as Blue Shield? Where do we come in as, as Blue Shield? If they'd like to be members of Blue Shield and volunteers in Blue Shield. So we're, we're planning it stage by stage, stage to see what's going on. Uh, but then of course, in May, we might not be as active as we should be because our parliamentary elections are coming up as well. So it's going to be very a bit busy in Lebanon. Uh, but we, we plan different activities based on, on what, what's going on. And then I think in 2023, we're, we're gonna, we're, we've started to plan for our conference. We actually have a conference every two years. Uh, the last conference was in 2021. It was a virtual online conference. And in 2023, we hope to have a face-to-face -face conference and you're all welcome to, uh, to come and, and visit Lebanon and, and join us in our conference. So we might be able to provide it as online and, and uh, physical, both you know, hybrid, a hybrid conference in a way, I'm not sure yet. I don't want to talk too much about it, but I'm not sure about it yet. Uh, that's what we're going. Um, from the, the Blue Shield part, uh, we've actually, uh, in the last three months, we finished uh, a training session with the Lebanese army. We're trying to set up a CPP, a cultural protection unit, uh, part of the army. We have a, a colonel who is very, very uh, active and very enthusiastic about this. We already finished uh, about five months ago, a training session with the UNIFIL who are based in the south of Lebanon on also how to, uh, to deal with cultural heritage uh, aspect. If something happens, how do you go in? How do you do the inventory? How do you handle heritage uh, items and artifacts when, when there is a, a conflict or, or disaster uh, occurring? So it's, it's, very, uh, it's a very rich platform. We're, we're all waiting for this British Council report to come out to see where we can move on with our projects and what we can actually do on a national level, not just libraries alone, museums, but on a national level, what is it we can do? Thank you so much, Rhonda. It's really, um, I really appreciate your time and help. It's, uh, it's. I know you are in your vacation, but thank you very much <laughs> for giving us the time. Thank you. Um, thank you. I really learned a lot today, and the most important thing that you have the first Arab um, <laughs> library association. association in the region, which is really <laughs> interesting. And thank you, everyone, for attending our talk today. And truly, truly, thank you. The uh, Mela for hosting us and for Harvard for hosting us for all our um, donors and continue to donate and thank you Rhonda I hope we will see thank you, you uh, here or there on IFLA and thank you very much appreciate everyone and thank you very much and thank you all of you for joining us for the session today it's very appreciated thank you Leila Bye. and please uh, hope to see you more and more uh, online with us or in, in person face to face sure 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 <laughs> okay. thank you so much bye -bye. have a good day bye, -bye. see you bye bye bye, -bye.